Right, so I wanted to show you this. I think this circuit kind of shows the power of resistors. This is a microcontroller. You program it and you can get it to do all sorts. I'm using it here to read the inputs of switches. You just click them and it does something. I wanted 12 for a 4x4 grid. One of the ways of doing like reading a switch is you just read the input of this switch, whether it's open or closed, to one of these pins, the digital pins, and then hunky dory. But with 12, if I have 12 switches and I've got one switch to each pin, I'd run out of pins really quickly. As in, I've got 12 on this side. So I've got 12 pins on this side. It'll fill, it'll fill up my pins very quickly. And I want to do other things. I want to attach other things to this board. So we need a better way of doing it. Well, this circuit here for all 12 buttons i only need to use one pin so i wanted to more discuss how how we can achieve this how this is achieved how we can use just one pin so before i bring the schematic out uh we've got this here so this is the schematic for this circuit you can see how we've got resistors and it all just looks a bit of a mess and confusing so I thought I'd explain how this works. Hopefully by the end of this, you'll understand what's going on here if you don't already. Yeah. So we'll start with, a res with the resistor. So the first thing about a resistor, we've got like the equations. So our equation V equals IR. So voltage equals the current times the resistance. Resistance is the value, the value of how much it slows the flow of current down. So you can rearrange this to equal I equals V over R. So that means if we make R bigger, the current gets smaller because uh, it's divided. So we got we the convention of current. Current goes from positive to negative, even though the flow of electrons goes from negative to positive uh, so we've got i goes that way and the voltage is the voltage drop across the resistor so if we were to write this out for this strictly we would go uh, i equals vcc minus g n d over the resistance so you've got you've got this, but in this case, G and D equals zero, so that equals zero. So you can cross that off. We don't need to talk about it in this in this scenario. So we've we've established what how the resistor works. So if you want to reduce your current, then you put a bigger resistor. So the next step to getting to this circuit, we want two resistors. So effectively, how this circuit works is get you to be able to read lots of different uh, switch values. We need something different about them. What we've done to provide a different signal to the board is make, when you switch the switch on, it provide a different voltage to the board. So that's where this circuit comes in. And this is a potential divider. So depending on the values of RG and R1, it can just be called R, it's just because it's pulled from here. Um, you get a different voltage, and this is uh, the voltage signal that's going to the board. So, depending on this ratio, we can get a different voltage out. So, the way this works, you've got, we assume that there's no current. So, I, S equals zero. So, there's no current going to the signal. It's just kind of a, a block and there's someone reading it. Um, so we have one current going this way and that's all the current so the total resistance of this is r1 plus rg so we've got i equals vcc because the gnd is equals to zero so we just kind of forget about it for now and then we've got r1 plus rg because it's so we've got V over R you add these together because um, they're in series you can add them together and anyway so you've got VCC divided by R1 plus RG so we've got the overall this gives us because we'll when we're making the circuit we'll know what RG is 
R1, and we'll know what VCC is, so these are all knowns. So we know this one, we know this one, we know this one, so that means we can obtain the current going through this potential divider as is. So then now we want to find out what Vs is. So if we know the current, so now the currents are known and we don't know the voltage. So now we, we can use the current we know. We can go I equals, and then we want Vs because we're going to work out what the voltage is from here to here. So like from them to work out what the voltage is from there we've got the voltage from here to here there to there which is VCC and this is going to be VS so VS and then our resistance between VS and ground is RG so once we get that we can we've got current in this one current in this one so we can make them equal to each other so we'll come over here for that. Uh, so we've got B, C, C, R, 1, plus R, G, equals V, S, R, G. So we've got these two equations that have come together. And we've got to remember, we, we know V, C, C, we know R, 1, we know R, G, we know R, G again. And then we're just trying to look for V, S. So... All we need to do is times both sides by RG to get VS on its own. So we get VCC RG R1 plus RG equals VS. So that is our equation for our potential divider. So that is what gives us VS. Got a bit messy, but that's what gives us VS. So we know we know VCC, we know V. We know RG, we know R1, we know RG again. So that means we've got our voltage that we're going to provide to the microcontroller. So, and then obviously we need to be able to change the signal. So we can't have all of them providing their voltage at the same time. Because that would get messy. With this circuit you can only use one switch at a time. Pressing two switches will send a different signal. So you'll make two parts. Anyway, so we've got that. And then next, we had a switch. We had a switch to the scenario, so it gives two options effectively. It gives us, it gives us two states to manage. So we have the first state, which is our V S equals V C C. So we've got, we've got this first state, and that's when this switch. This is the switch symbol. So. When this switch gets closed, we have this state, and Vs equals what these end up being. And then when we have it open, any sort of charge that any sort of voltage that Vs has got gets dissipated to ground. So it's either Vs equals zero, oh, oh G N D, or Vs equals this, so we've got two clear states. Well, to make it so we've got low, 12 different signals going, all we need to do is change R1. So we change this value, and by changing this value, we're splitting the signals up. So, you, so then when we write it into the microcontroller, it will provide a different voltage, so we can read that voltage off. So now we're going to want to find the values for R1 that give us, like we want equal values for R1 so we can equally step uh, Vs. So we want to divide, to get equal values of Vs by 12, we want to divide our total voltage, Vcc, divided by 12, kind of equals our uh, Vs uh, step. So we've got like our voltage step that we want to achieve. So to do this, we want to rearrange this equation. So we'll have this one. So to do this, we'll go V, S, and then we're going to divide the whole side from this because we're wanting to get R1 by itself. Because of this equation here, 
VS is now our known, so we know this. We know VCC, we know RG, so we're going to select that, uh, and it's going to be the same, it's, there's only one value, so we can select that beforehand. And then we just need to know our R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, R6, R7, R8, R9, R12. Uh, so we just need to know these resistance values. So we need to rearrange for R1, uh, R1 to 12. So we're going to divide both sides by VCC and RG. VCC, RG. One over. And then we'll we'll invert them both. So we've got V. So we we flip them both flip both sides. And then we can minus R G off both sides. So we need to modify this slightly. So, uh, we, so we'll take this equation and we'll simplify it a bit just to make it easier to work with. As in, we'll redefine some terms. So we've got VCC. So we've got, we'll redefine the terms. Uh, we'll use this equation and we'll redefine the terms just to make it easier to think about. RG equals VCC because we discussed earlier that our VS kind of step is going to be VCC divided by 12 times and then we'll call it N which is the the resist the number attached to the resistor so we're working 1 to 12 work our way down minus RG equals resistor RN so basically the number we put in front of the resistor after the resistor is the number we put there so then we can get our voltages we'll set what well, so then we'll define our numbers the to keep the current down what we do is uh the general like a good ballpark is 10 kilo ohms so we will set rg rg equals 10 kilo ohms uh, and then we have VCC on these boards is 5 volts equals 5 volt and that's all we need to know so well what you just effectively put in we'll make a little table R1 R2 R3 R4 Right, so we've got our resistances. I, just as a rule of thumb, if you have more switches, your resistances will, as well as, you'll have to have a steadier voltage supply so you don't get any ripples for the crossover. You'll also need to have, like, a more accurate representation of what the ideal resistance, so these are the ideal resistances, and then you have the resistance that you use in your circuit. So we've got our ideal resistances here. I made a rule that I wouldn't use any more than two resistors uh, to make up these values, uh, which is, I, fa I found that they're perfectly near enough to what they should be uh, for, for it all to work. So hopefully that's clearer. You've got, so we work through here. It's a lot quicker than using your calculator if you use like a programming language like Python because you can just loop through. So this is done in seconds, it does it all for you, prints it out. So now you can see if we have these different voltages, so we're going to have
so you can see now we've got our resistor values um we've set up our potential dividers here our two phase two state potential dividers here we've got low like them coming down and they're all vs is all connected to the same pin that goes to the board so when this button's pressed it'll give off 0 0.08 around that whatever it ends up being uh, volts to the microcontroller so when it receives that voltage it's so basically it's either zero or a voltage because all of them have got the open state so when the the book buttons open they all read zero volts and then when they're closed they all read a different voltage so when this one's pressed it reads 0.083 volts just a, enough above zero for it to be read and then when we move up we get different voltages so the microcontroller knows if it sees a value of 0.25 volts or around that it get it'll say oh that's button three and it works like that when you're writing the code you want to have kind of your voltages to be kind of bracketed so i have so that that would be i would have the the voltage be in that range where kind of the cutoff points halfway between these two voltages that way you have a bit of you have room for that lee you have leeway built into your program but i feel like this i hope some of that was helpful and made a little bit of sense i just thought that this uh this circuit kind of shows the power of resistors to like define the like give you voltages uh, and how they can be used for for various things it's not just for slowing electricity down yeah i might make a another video on how to just make a short program so you, so you don't have to do this all by hand on the calculator because i find that sort of thing tedious and error prone so i like to do it on the computer i didn't want to cover that this time yeah i hope that was interesting uh all right cheers yeah.